And now it's time for another Project Happening Review. Is this Space Monkey? Absolute Paul. Hilo Light. And I'm Clyde. This is our review for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One is a spin-off of the main Star Wars series. It takes place right before Episode 4. Imperial director Orson Krennic tracks down former Imperial engineer Galen Erso to help him finish this stalled Death Star project. Galen is reluctant and his wife is killed trying to prevent Galen's involuntary departure. Galen's young daughter Jin escapes detection as her father leaves with Krennic. She is taken in by rebel extremist Saw Gerrera. We fast forward many years to find adult Jin on an Imperial prisoner transport and is rescued by the Rebel Alliance in order for her to help find her father. She is set to task with Captain Cassian Andor and K2SO, who unbeknownst to Jin are ordered to eliminate Galen. Galen, meanwhile, has sent an Imperial defector to his old friend Saul with a message from the Rebels. Andor and Jin find Saul only to be imprisoned by the paranoid extremists. Jin and Saul speak privately and see the hologram message from Galen describing how to destroy the Death Star as he intentionally installed a flaw. The Death Star, however, blasts the site where Jin, Andor, and Saul are near. For a demonstration, Jin, Andor, and the Defector and a few other friends escape along with Galen's hologram message thanks to K2SO. But Saw perishes along with Galen's hologram message. Jin and the gang locate Galen on an Imperial research base and travel there. Krennic also travels to the base to confront Galen as he learned of the Imperial Defector that originally was sent by Galen from said base. Cassian hesitates to assassinate Galen and sends word to the Rebel Alliance as to their location. Soon after, a squadron of Rebel X-Wings bombs the base, mortally wounding Galen. Jin rushes to her father's side only to witness his final moments. The Rebels since learn of the flaw in the Death Star from Jin, and the Death Star plans are being kept on the distant planet Scarif. Jin, Andor, and a few more Rebels decide to head there after the Rebel Alliance decides going there is too risky. The team manages to land on Scarif, prompting the Rebel Alliance to finally take action, and their fleet is dispatched to Scarif to help. Krennic also travels to Scarif to investigate Galen's betrayal at the behest of Darth Vader. All hell breaks loose as Jin, Andor, and K2SO break into the complex where the Death Star plans are kept, and the first major battle between the Empire and the Rebels begin. The Death Star itself is also sent to destroy the Imperial Complex on the surface of Scarif to prevent the plans from being stolen by the Rebel. Jin and Andor manage to beam the plans to the Rebel fleet. Krennic gives chase and almost shoots Jin before Andor shoots him instead. Although the Death Star plans are sent to the Rebel fleet above, Jin and friends are trapped below and perish as the Death Star blasts the Imperial Complex to dust. Here is where Darth Vader has his shining moment. He boards the Rebel flagship to recapture the plans and tears through a group of frightened Rebel soldiers who manage to get the plans off of that ship and into the hands of Princess Leia, who takes off on her Carillion Corvette to find a certain old Jedi on a remote desert world. Alright, so that was our synopsis of Rogue One of Star Wars Stories. Now we're going to open it up for discussion to see what we think about this movie. So, uh, for me personally, I thought that was probably the best Star Wars movie since the original trilogy. My favorite movie was Return of the Jedi, so this is probably now number two. I've seen it a few times. It was actually pretty good. The story was solid. Action was pretty good. I thought the special effects were on point. Um, I actually liked the CG Grand Moff Tarkin, um, Peter Cushing. Uh, he died a long time ago, but uh, they actually did a good job recreating him in the movie. And uh, it actually Actors really are immortal. They'll come back and they can recreate anything nowadays. Yeah. They don't need anybody. Spoiler alert! Yes. Uh, just in case. You spoiler alert! You're the last person. Yeah, this, is, this, is a, this is a this is a spoiler full review. Yep. And everything we do will be full of spoilers. It's it's been out. The movie's been out for quite a long time. So if you haven't seen it by now and you're watching Shame this, on you. that's too bad. But thank you for watching this. <laughs> and if you're watching this, thanks, mom. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, I, I thought this was a lot better than episode um, seven, which I thought was very very underwhelming, unfortunately. So I thought this one kind of put me back on track on the Star Wars fan club. So uh, I thought that was pretty good. I love the story that this one told. It's talking about exactly what was lost in the rebellion. Everything that we knew had happened, we knew that there was loss, we knew that there was this huge risk, we knew that there was a, um, this journey, but we just didn't know what it was. And this tells the story of that. And it's like that gap that you always wanted, and 40 years later... You yeah, it. yeah, it does. It tells the story of why there's a exhaust port flaw on the Death Star that nobody seems to know about that why would the Empire overlook something like mm -hmm. that and, oh here it is the, the lead engineer was actually a, a spy or a intentionally I think there's spies in this one yeah it's like a war movie it it's, supposed to, be, it's awesome. supposed to be death and destruction you're supposed to feel for these guys mm -hmm. I, go ahead well I was going to say really quick that my favorite part of the movie 
yes, we did know what the premise was going to be going into it, so um, it wasn't really a surprise except uh, we just got a lot more clear explanations why everything happened the way it did and a new hope. My favorite part was actually the characters. I thought they did an amazing job of casting and then the character, just the actors did a really, really good job. I was really into yeah. the story from beginning to end. They were into the story. They so, yeah. they so consumed those roles. It was awesome. Well, <clears throat> I hate to be that guy. Not for the dissenting opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate to be that guy. There's always but, at least one, right? But it was like, <laughs> it was really two halves for me. I told two halves. It was the first half of the movie really felt slow and boring to me. I mean, they want us to care about these characters that they're gonna kill off at the end of the end of the movie anyway. It's like wasted plot uh, character development. That's the way I saw it. Oh, um, I, I agree. That like the Saw Gerrera yeah. character, if that character had never existed, the Star Wars movies would still be what they are. And, exactly. that, yeah. and even Rogue One would still be what it is without that character. I liked that character. It's actually funny you say that, because I guess in the original cuts, they planned on some of the characters actually living at the end of the movie. Because mm -hmm. there were some scenes that they had on the commercials that weren't actually in the theatrical release showing them running out of the base, I guess. So I guess they, and they did reshoot, so I guess they decided to to not have them survive at the end. So it's funny you say that. I mean, but but, like, but the second half of the movie is just from from the moment they land on Scarif, just yes. the war. The war was awesome. That, that's the second half of the movie for me saves the whole movie. It just makes mm -hmm. it watchable. And it, it, it brought you back it into it. It brought me back into the whole thing, yeah. Well, how many times have you seen it? I've seen it twice. Okay. I've seen it twice. Did you like it any it better? Just like it the second time I liked it a bit better just because I knew what to pay attention to in the first half mm -hmm. and what I, what I could not mm -hmm. because it didn't really matter at the okay. end. So where did this rank on your list of <clears throat> top to bottom? Where does this rank from your Star Wars movies? Where does it sit? Smack dab. Like, it's definitely not, not as good as the original trilogy. What's your number one? Is Empire your number Empire one? Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, New oh. Hope, Revenge of the Sith, Force Awakens, Rogue One. Wow, we right, so it's I really like Force there. Awakens, though. Yeah. I think this is right up there with me with Force Awakens. So you like both movies? I did. Right. Oh, I like I like. Every time I see Force Awakens, well. I like it more. Force Awakens. Yeah, that's the way I feel about Force Awakens, too. And that's on um, Blu ray, so we can watch that whenever we want. Whenever we do. <laughs> well, um, at well, this point. Uh, so well, I was going to say, speaking of characters, what did everyone think about the main characters? Jen, played by Felicity Jones, and Cassian, played by Diego Luna. I, for one, thought Cassian. Mm -hmm was amazing. And the first few scenes, when I when he first appeared, I, I was like, what, you know, this is trying to be a Han Solo type guy. No, it was but definitely well, his unique own character. Right, yeah. once once we got to know him a little better, I definitely... He is now a template, he's like the rebel spy template. Now, right. Which, yeah. which he's, he's now the mold for that for that Star Wars mm -hmm. character, which is good. I think he did a really good job. Yeah, I do too, and uh, Felicity Jones, I thought it was, she was much, too, much better than... I anticipated. Mm -hmm. I knew she was gonna be okay, obviously, if she got that role. Right. But she, yeah. I thought, knocked it out of the park. My favorite scene of the first half was when Cassian kills his his uh, his contact. Oh. Yeah, his contact, uh, just because the guy's scared and he may blow the whole thing. Yeah, from. that was pretty great. Yeah, they, there were some tough choices that they had to make in this movie. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's a character I would like to do a lot more about, like his backstory. Yeah. He made a few comments like when he was six years old and stuff started happening. Right. Right. That's inf that's stuff that I would like to know more about. Right. It's like you finally have all these answers and now you just have more questions. But who are these people? Now speaking of these people, what about Orson Krennic, played by Ben Mendelsohn? Classic Mendoza. villain, classic. Yeah. In this movie, he was really, really good. Absolutely. The character was written very well and he really carry that movie. Oh yeah, he, the, the villain did what a villain should. He, he mo helped move the plot along. Which he is was up there with... I mean, with, in that scene with Vader, he, right. he held his own. Absolutely, yeah. which is not easy. Yeah. Uh, not the screen easy. presence was good, uh, worked out very well, so I was very pleased with that. And it, uh, that's really tough to have all these, we've been watching Star Wars our whole lives. And it's just kind of automatically just fit in there. there well. Fit in there. I don't even know how he did that, but he, he did it. He's that's like automatically classic. Is that thing, the writing, the directing, everything was, I think, was on point? It was on point. And I, again, spoiler, or that's key happening, but I still can't believe at least his character didn't survive one way or another. <laughs> like, I thought for sure somehow he would squeal as well. Uh, no, he, got, he, got, he got the shaft by his superiors, which is classic Imperial MO, so. Yeah, you, you can't wait for it to happen. You just love to hate him. Yeah. He absolutely. comes in and you're just like. 
oh, I hate you. And so you good. kind of feel bad that Grandma Tarkin stole his props. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. right. That's, that's classic. Class. Makes you hate him more. Makes you hate him more. <laughs> what do you guys give the movie from one to ten? Uh, I give it a eight out of ten, maybe eight and a half. Um, I, I loved it. I gave it a nine. I'm gonna give it a solid nine out of ten. I I I, I, I really liked it. Wow, I feel. <laughs> I give it a five, five um, just because the Bring first half. That curve. means the first half is what zero out of five, but the second half is a five out of five. No, 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 no. I, the first half was a three out of ten. Second half was a seven out of ten. For okay. Me. So I just cut down the middle and we did a five. Where's seven? Well, mine just went up. I'm now at a nine. <laughs> 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 oh, fine, I mean, so I'm the only uh, I'm the only outcast here. So three out of four Project Happening members recommend this movie. Thank you for joining us, and this has been a Project Happening review of Rogue One. And remember to keep the projects happening. <laughs>